Alright, so to get started, we can create a new layer where we'll be using the character controller component. We can just make it a capsule, like so, and we can give it a fancy name like player. We can raise it above the ground and move it to the side like that. We can remove the mesh renderer, and then we can add in something like a um, character controller component. Like so, and that will add in this character controller component. Then we can add in a, I meant to add in a camera, but <laughs> we can add in a camera, like so, and just keep its name as camera. And then we can raise it to the area we want it to. Alright, we can create a new C sharp script and call it something like player movement, like so let unity do its thing then we can open it up in visual studio or visual studio code i'm personally using visual studio code just because i like it more all right so we're in visual studio code and everything imported is everything we need to import we can remove the start and update function and we can type in public float move speed and set it equal to like eight or something like nine float or eight or something public float run speed i miss public up here public float run speed and set it equal to like 11 or something and then we can say public float default oh wait we don't we need a public float float and call it gravity and set it equal to negative 9.81f. This is, I believe, Earth's default gravity. You change the second 9 to an 8. And then we add public float ground this distance, like so, and set it equal to 0.5f. If you want more information on a uh, first person movement in Unity, I recommend Bracky's video on it. This is just a simplified version of it with some extra stuff in it. So we also need a public float stamina, if I can type it correctly, and set it equal to 10. And then we need a public float <clears throat> max stamina and set it equal to 10 as well now we need a couple of transforms so we need a vector 3 and call it velocity we need a public transform and just call it ground check or something then we need a public character controller and set it and just call it something like care controller like so and then we need a public layer mask and call it something like ground mask or just give it a fancy name or something and then we need a boolean and we can call it something like is grounded like so and then we need a public pull as well and call it something like is running this is how we know to subtract stamina and then we can say public bool can run is equal to true and then we can Type in void awake, like so, or just type in awake and Visual Studio should automatically fill it out. So we can say default move speed. I forgot to type this out. I said we didn't need it, but apparently we did. Um, default move speed. Public float float default move speed. All right. <clears throat> and then we need a default run speed as well. Oopsie daisy. Public float default run speed and then we can end both these lines and semicolons and then we can set the default move speed is equal to the move move speed like so and then we can say the default i misspelled give me a second default run speed is equal to the run speed like so now we can go down to our update function this is where we're going to be handling a lot of input so we can say is grounded is equal to physics 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 dot check sphere check sphere and then we can say um hold on and we can set it equal to the ground check as our position dot position so we need to add dot position to it 
dot position. Then we need the ground distance. And then the ground mass. Ground distance and ground mass like so. And then we can say if is grounded and velocity dot y is less than zero, we can do some fancy magic and say velocity dot y is equal to negative 3f. <clears throat> and then we can say float x, float x is equal to input dot get axis and say horizontal. You have to type it out like I am. And then we need to float y and say equal to input dot get axis and then say vertical like so. And both those lines and semicolons I got used to Python. All right. And then we need, oh wait, this is supposed to be float z. Sorry, I apologize. And then we can say vector three and call it move is equal to transform transform dot right and multiplied by x plus transform dot forward dot forward multiplied by z then that should work for that and then we can do care controller dot move like so and then we can open and close parentheses move multiplied by the move speed multiplied by time dot delta time just make sure that what you're doing is frame rate independent so it's not doing anything based on the frame rate and then this is when we handle the running and it says if input dot get key because we're not doing get key down so we have to make sure the person is holding the key instead of pressing it. And then we can do key code dot left shift. This is usually the default run operation. And we have to check if can run is equal to true. And then we can open close brackets like so. And then we can do player control or player or care controller, sorry, dot move, sorry move move multiplied by the run speed multiplied by time dot delta time time dot delta time like so we can end that line and then we can say stamina minus equals time dot delta time then we can end that now we can handle actual running so we can create a new if statement this is a lot of if logic and it says if stamina is less than or equal to zero, we can open close print or brackets. And we can say can run is equal to false, not float, false. And then we can say start coroutine, start coroutine. And we can call it give stamina when we make it, like so. Then we can end that if statement. Now we can add another if statement, and it says if stamina is greater than or equal to the max stamina, we can say can run is equal to, sorry, can run is equal to true, like so. Now that ends that part of it, and then we can say stamina, stamina is equal to math if dot clamp and then we can say stamina zero and then max stamina minus one so and then we can end that particular line and then we can say velocity dot y plus equals gravity multiplied by time dot delta time so it's frame rate independent, like so. And then we can do player character controller. I mean, dot move. And then we can say velocity multiplied by time dot delta time, like so. And then we can end that line. All right, now we have to add a late update. So this occurs right after the update function. And we just have to put some basic crouch logic in there. So it says if input.get key and then it says key code dot left control like so. Then we can open and close curly brackets and then we can say player controller or character controller 
dot height is equal to point zero point five f like so and then that's it for that if statement and then we can say else like that and then in it we need player controller character controller I mean I keep saying their controller dot height is equal to 2 f like so and then we can say move speed is equal to default move speed and then we can say run speed is equal to default run speed like so and then we need a coroutine for the give stamina function and we can just do that by typing in i enumerator and then giving it a function name like give stamina like so and then we need it to return something um when i did this in the original code i made it return null or new for four seconds Turn new and wait four seconds four seconds and then four like so and then we can say stamina plus equals one f like so all right then we can go back into unity let it compile and then we can play wait a minute we forgot a semicolon on two lines actually line 36 and line 39 so line 36 is all the way up here in line 39 see this is what happens when you get used to python you forget to end your lines and semicolons <laughs> all right now we should be able to run it transform I just type transform so it's really just about fixing these errors and unity gives you a lot of information on what the error is yeah there's no such thing as trance there we go now we should be able to do it and physics contains no definition for check sphere because I misspelled sphere now everything should work All right, now we can run our script. Oh, we haven't assigned our script anything. That is why. <laughs> we, we first have to assign our script to the player. And then we can give it a ground check. Ground check. Like so. We can put this at, I believe, negative five. Nope, that's way too low. Negative two. It's really just about trial and error. All coding is. So no, that is still way too low. Negative one. Uh, yeah, sure, that works. Okay. And then we can assign the ground check to that. And then the character controller is the player. Like so, now we should be able to move. As we can see, we're moving, and then we should fall off. Yep, we're falling down pretty quickly. So this is the first part of the player movement video. If you found this first part informative and you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe and smash that bell. It helps out the channel and helps get content like this recommended to you and others. So meet me in the next part.